I am Sri Devi Peter, interventional cardiologist at UT Health Northeast Tyler, Texas. My goal for this presentation is to provide background for the usage of ultrasound guidance for vascular access in cardiac catheterization lab. Clearly, whichever access strategy is utilized in the cath lab, it is important that the vascular access be obtained in the safest way possible. Ultrasound guidance is widely used for central venous access, but seldom used in the cath lab, despite growing evidence. I am going to review the data, publication to support the use of ultrasound guidance for vascular access, along with providing basic instructions about the setup, technical detail for ultrasound guided vascular access. Transfemoral catheterization is still a common procedure worldwide and vascular access bleeding during coronary interventions is associated with adverse outcomes. An important strategy for reducing access site bleeding is to achieve optimal location for femoral access. However, there is paucity of data on how well this goal is achieved in clinical practice using traditional approaches of physical, fluoroscopic landmark, and microscopic puncture. Location of femoral artery axis and correlation vascular complications has been retrospectively evaluated using femoral angiograms of 300 patients undergoing percutaneous coronary interventions. Arterial axis above the femoral bifurcation but below the inferior border of the inferior epigastric artery is optimal location and those that are either above or below these landmarks are suboptimal location. The femoral artery axis site was located outside the optimal location in 13% of the patients and was associated with an increased risk of vascular complications. Overall axis-related complications occurred in 5.7% of the patients. Vascular complications were significantly more frequent in patients who had a femoral artery axis outside the optimal location. The incidence of femoral artery bleeding declined significantly from the earliest to the contemporary time period in a Mayo Clinic series of 17,000 patients. As noted in this series, adverse outcomes of major femoral bleeding included prolonged hospital stay and increased requirement for blood transfusion. Blood transfusion and major femoral bleeding were both associated with decreased long-term survival, driven by a significant increase in 30-day mortality. This should be a strong clinical driver for further improvements in access strategies for patients undergoing percutaneous coronary interventions. Ultrasound guidance is widely used for central venous access in numerous hospital settings, but is seldom used in the cath lab despite growing evidence of its potential benefit and utility. Optimal arterial access by routine real-time ultrasound guidance has the potential of reducing vascular complications and improving outcomes. Comparison of ultrasound guidance compared to traditional landmark and fluoroscopic technique has reduced the number of necessary attempts for successful common femoral artery cannulation, the time to vascular access, the risk of veni punctures. Ultrasound-guided femoral axis reduce the risk of vascular complications significantly compared to fluoroscopic guidance. Increasing ultrasound experience was associated with the reduced time required for access with ultrasound guidance. Operators with more than 10 procedures have reduced access time and demonstrated a trend toward improved common femoral artery cannulation success. Clearly, whichever access strategy is utilized in the cath lab, there is a growing evidence to show ultrasound-guided vascular access is safe and effective. Ultrasound guidance facilitates precise cannulation of vessels, regardless of anatomic variation, which can increase procedural success. In comparative studies of palpation-guided and ultrasound-guided radial access, the number of needle attempts to obtain access reduced, the first pass success rate improved, and the time to access decreased using ultrasound guidance. 
not only increasing evidence for ultrasound guidance for vascular access for coronary interventions, use of ultrasound-guided peripheral interventions has shown to improve success rate in limb salvage and amputation prevention procedures. Ultrasound machines are increasingly available in numerous hospital settings, including medical floors, intensive care units, and emergency departments, and have been widely used by vascular surgeons, interventional radiologists, ER and ICU physicians for their vascular access procedures. Only in the cardiac cath lab has the use of ultrasound been notably limited despite the significant potential for bleeding and other vascular complications from coronary, peripheral and structural interventions. It is a straightforward technique that is relatively easy to learn and utilizes equipment that is readily available in most hospitals. With a reasonable experience, vascular access using ultrasound is safe and efficient. There are multiple applications for ultrasound-guided access in the cardiac cath lab, which includes coronary procedures, peripheral, along with structural heart procedures and interventions. There are several ultrasound devices commercially available for vascular access. Be familiar with device settings and use it routinely in the lab which helps to familiarize with the anatomy and improve the success. At our institute, we use Sight Right 6, point of care portable ultrasound to assist in accurate vascular access. Briefly review the instructions for Sight Right ultrasound system and components. Scanner is mounted on the roll stand with probe on the sidearm. Keyboard tray, one large storage basket for supplies external battery and adapter, along with the printer. Large wheels help to negotiate elevator transitions and other obstacles. Back panel consists of USB connectors and power inlet. Let's review the icons on the display screen, which includes gain, depth, depth markers, printer, freeze, on and off reset. Catheter size icons are displaced in proportion to the vessel image at a selected depth. Depth can be changed to image structure at different depths to adjust the focus and improve the ultrasound image. Image gain can be adjusted to amplify the signal. Adjusting the gain affects the entire image, both target and non-target. Snapshot of the display screen for review. Be familiar with the components of the probe controls, which includes needle guide hook, probe orientation marker, acoustic window. In addition, has on and off reset, decrease gain or increase gain, freeze image to print or save the image, depth markers to adjust the focus. Snapshots of the probe controls for review at convenience. Sterile probe kit includes sterile gel, bands, sterile probe cover. Probe cover is acoustically transparent and needs to be fully rolled up. Apply a layer of ultrasound gel on the acoustic window of the probe head. Place the probe cover over the probe head carefully not to wipe off the coupling gel. Cover the probe and the cable with the probe cover. Smooth the probe cover over the acoustic window of the probe head to remove any air bubbles or folds. Use the bands to hold the probe cover in place. Hold the probe so that the side with the needle guide hook points away from the heart or the patient. There are options to attach needle guide to the probe. Place the probe against the skin, perpendicular to the target vessel. The probe is moved cranial to coral or superiorly until the common femoral artery is visualized. The vessels are identified and imaged in an axial plane. Common femoral artery bifurcation is identified along with the bifurcation into superficial femoral artery 
and profound of femoral artery. Compression is used to differentiate arteries from the femoral vein. During the needle advancement, the anterior wall of the vessel is kept under the central target line. Once artery is centralized, using green dotted line, you can see the indentation by the echogenic needle and needle entry of the anterior wall of the common femoral artery. Once the puncture occurs, the vessel wall returns to normal shape. Hold the needle, then remove the probe away from the needle and advance the wire. The sterile probe kit consists of sterile probe cover, sterile gel and bands. A caustically transparent sterile probe cover is fully rolled up. Apply a layer of gel on the caustic window of the probe head. Place the probe cover over the probe head carefully not to wipe off the gel. Cover the probe and cable with the probe cover. Smooth the probe cover over the acoustic window of the probe head to remove any air bubbles or folds. Use the bands to hold the probe cover in place. Hold the probe so that the side with the needle guide hook points away from the heart or patient. There are options to attach needle guide to the probe. Localize the radial artery image in the axial plane. It is pulsatile and artery centralized using the green dotted line. You can see the intendation by the echogenic needle. Needle can be visualized by short wiggles followed by needle entry of the anterior wall of the radial artery. Once the puncture occurs, the vessel wall returns to normal shape. Hold the needle and advance the wire. Ultrasound guided tibial artery axis. Position the foot appropriately for axis with lateral position or rotation for posterior tibial artery and dorsiflexion for anterior tibial artery axis. Technique for tibial artery similar to radio. Ultrasound probe is placed behind the malleolus and probe is scanned up and down to find the ideal spot for axis. Tibial artery is pulsatile and surrounded by tibial veins and can be identified by compressibility. Posterior tibial artery is difficult to access compared to anterior tibial artery axis. We have provided data so far about the ultrasound guided vascular axis, videos, for practice and familiarizing and we also included resources for review and practice. We'll be continuously updating with clinically relevant vascular ultrasound images. Thank you.